Dear Sunshine, welcome to Your Artsy Friend, a podcast that's like a pal who shows up with a warm cup of coffee, ready to give you a pep talk when you need it most. If you've ever had those moments where self-doubt sneaks in, telling you you're not good enough, then know you're in the right place. Here we'll dive into the realness of embracing imperfections, discover our truest, most authentic selves, and share actionable tips to ignite your creative spirit and nourish your soul. I'm your host, Anastasia. I'm a photographer, mural artist, and podcaster. But most importantly, I'm your artsy friend. So let's dive in. Hello, sunshine. Welcome to another episode of Your Artsy Friend. Today I'm going to speak from the heart and I'm going to go on a bit of a passionate rant, but I promise you that it is going to be a passionate rant you'll really, really enjoy and maybe even really, really need to hear. For today's episode, I'll be talking about the importance of self-compassion and how crucial it is to give yourself grace and love during difficult times, especially if those difficult times consist of maybe a mistake or you being imperfect. If you are a perfectionist, an overthinker, or just someone that tends to put a lot of pressure on yourself, then you can probably relate when I say that making mistakes or feeling like you aren't your best self can result in a inner monologue that basically becomes an inner bully. Your thoughts become very unkind and there's a lot of shame and hurtful talk going on inside of your mind and that can absolutely consume you. And so I want to share a bit of a vulnerable and honest story with you about a recent mistake that I've made and how it made me spiral into those very hurtful thoughts. Before I dive into the story though, I do want to do a quick breakdown of some of the tips I have for you and ways that you can be more compassionate and loving to yourself. I will go ahead and expand on these tips when I tell you my story, but for now we'll just do a quick little breakdown. So tip number one is acknowledging when you're being a bully and addressing the hurtful things you're saying to yourself in that moment. Tip number two is to journal all the unkind things that you're thinking or saying about yourself. Put it on paper and bring it out of your mind. Bring it onto a tangible object that can be seen. Tip number three, looking at your list of your most likely very unkind statements, I want you to think of someone you love and care about. Maybe it's a best friend, a child, a partner. Think of this person and ask yourself, would I speak to them this way if they were in the same situation? In my case, I always think of my niece. My niece is only eight years old and she, oh my gosh, she has truly been my bestest bestest friend since the moment my sister gave birth to her. I freaking love and adore that child like no other. And sometimes I think that I can actually find a little bit of relation to my niece when I'm trying to connect and heal my inner child. If this sounds confusing, just bear with me. It'll make sense. But, you know, I just see my niece as such a beautiful, innocent soul that deserves so much love and just amazing things in this world. I never want her to experience hurt, and I especially never want her to experience some of the hurt that I went through as a child. Even further, I would never, ever, ever want her to experience the thoughts and the self-shame that I give myself. I would never want her to do that to herself. I'll dive into this a little bit further on a different podcast episode, but speaking back to that inner child thing, you know, I think I've really struggled connecting with my inner child in my therapy journey. It was really difficult for me to view myself as that innocent child, if that makes sense. It's like I couldn't separate all the pressures and the hurt and the difficult life moments of growing up way too young. And because of that, I couldn't connect with myself in a compassionate or soft way that a child should be treated. But I think one thing that really helped me, especially with my hurtful self-talk, was to ask myself, what would you say to Erilyn if she made a mistake? You know, what if Erilyn was your age now and she called you crying because she messed up? Would you say the same things to her? Does she deserve that? No, absolutely not. I also don't deserve that. I didn't back then and I don't now. And so putting that into perspective, I mean, wow, it is just a really, really powerful thing you can do for yourself. In my case, obviously, I would never, ever, ever treat my niece that way. I would only try to help her move forward, help her still love herself, help her provide her self-forgiveness and understanding. I could never imagine speaking to her like that. And so in your case, whoever this loved one is, I want you to think of it that way. You know, would, would you speak to them that way? Most likely not. At least I hope not. But you also shouldn't speak to yourself that way. And you shouldn't treat yourself that way in a hard time. 
You should give yourself that same love and that same understanding because you also deserve that. Okay, sorry, that was a bit of a tangent on that tip. Obviously, I feel very passionate about that one. I'll definitely dive into that even deeper on a different episode, but for this episode, we're going to stay on track. So tip number three was to think of someone you love and ask yourself, could you speak to them that way? Tip number four is to now follow up with that journaling page of all those hurtful statements, and I want you to now journal compassionate statements, understanding statements, and positive affirmations. Tip number five, lastly, Try to bring some of the emotions out of the situation and bring some logic in. Create a list of solutions for whatever the mistake or scenario at hand may be and try to focus on forward thinking instead of staying in self-shame and guilt. Hey lover, I'm interrupting today's episode to quickly tell you about something super exciting going on. If you feel like you've been stuck in a creative rut, you're waiting for your spark to come back, and no matter what, you just can't bring yourself to create even though you want to, then listen up because I've got the perfect challenge for you. Allow me to introduce you to The Creative Remedy, a three-week challenge that is jam-packed with pep talks, tutorials, tips, journaling prompts, and so much more. If you're ready to get your spark back, say goodbye to perfectionism and overthinking, and make creativity a daily habit, then head on over to aristasia.com slash thecreativeremedy to sign up. Or if it's easier, go ahead and click the link in the show notes, and I can't wait to see you there. Now, back to our episode. All right, now that I've given you that quick little breakdown of ways that you can have more self-compassion, let me dive in a little deeper and let me share a bit of vulnerability with you and just give you an example of how absolutely toxic my mind can be and probably how toxic yours can. (laughs) If you follow me on Instagram, this will seem a little bit familiar because I did open up about it on my Instagram. But this last week I shared how my boyfriend and I's cat, Maxwell, got outside and had been missing for days. And when I say I was an absolute wreck during those days... I mean, I was a wreck. I was just crying. I was filled with anxiety, just completely worried about him. I was playing out worst case scenarios. (laughs) He's an indoor cat, so this is a very unlikely situation and it's never happened before. Because of this, I was just filled with a lot of guilt and self-hatred. It was awful. You know, I was the one who was home when he got out. So I was feeling like it was my fault. And if my boyfriend were home, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Ultimately, like, I was the reason that our little fur baby was missing. I just kept replaying, like, every step in my mind, just racking my brain for logic and explanation of how the heck did this happen? How did he get out? I don't understand. And while all of the replaying and the worry that I had about this situation is completely normal and expected, what wasn't normal, or at least should not be normal, was the way that my brain went from being a worried cat mom and finding solutions to now being my biggest bully, just filled with blame and shame and guilt and really, really, really unkind self-talk. An accidental mistake of possibly maybe leaving the door open for too long. I still don't know how he got out, but I'm gonna assume that's what it was. That little mistake and accident spiraled into an absolute berating of myself. And in this process, I was no longer even thinking about just that mistake. I was now going down rabbit holes of all my mistakes and all the things that I just don't love about myself and all the times I've been forgetful, all the times someone must have felt like I was a burden to them because I messed up something within a home. That's probably deeper rooted trauma there, but you know, it's fine. (laughs) But all in all, this just really, this whole overthinking and inner monologue just led to me questioning my worth I was questioning my value as a girlfriend and partner you know sharing a home with people that depend on me and with animals that need taken care of I was questioning my impact and saying things like you're a mess how can you help others how can you release podcast episodes and art tutorials and you know share pep talks how can you inspire others it just got so freaking dark and maybe to some this sounds a bit drastic and crazy especially if you're not a cat person. <laughs> but for me, you know, it was huge. Our our cats are our life. We don't have children. We just have our two little kitties that we literally base our days around. I mean, our, those cats, they take up my boyfriend and I's whole heart. This example is specific to my animals. So of course, it's a very emotional, close to home example. But honestly, this isn't the first time I've torn myself down in a situation where I messed up and I wasn't perfect. I've done this in the past over small, big, and everything in between type of mistakes. For you, this might look like 
having a bad day at work and knowing you didn't do your best. Maybe you forgot about something for your kids in your very busy schedule. Maybe you had an unhappy client or customer and now you're just questioning every bit of your skills and your passion. So whatever it may be, whatever that situation is, I know you can probably relate in some way where you weren't perfect and instead of being your own supportive friend, you probably became your worst enemy and you spiraled into some really, really hurtful self-talk. So now that I've shared a little bit of that situation, this very, very recent situation, I would like to reference my top tips and I want to share some ways that I handled this self-shame recent event and just give a bit of a more personal and detailed breakdown for you. So tip number one was acknowledging your thoughts and addressing the unkindness in the moment. I definitely probably had the self-talk going on longer than I should have, but we're not going to dwell on that. What matters is, is I did catch myself. I caught myself in that negative pattern and I told myself, come on girl, you are doing it again. You know how this ends. You're just going to get deeper and deeper into this low. Why are you being so mean? I thought about what happens after I engage in this self-loathing. You know, the way it impacts my creativity, my friendships, my relationship, my mental health. (laughs) So all in all, first step, I addressed my thoughts. I acknowledged what I was doing and I promised myself I wasn't going to allow them to continue and I was going to get a grip on them. So then I moved into tip number two and I journaled down all those hurtful statements and all that negative self-talk I was doing. In this case, I really found myself saying things like, why are you so forgetful? You literally lost your cat. Maybe you're not meant to have people or living things be in the same home as you. You're a wrecking ball of chaos. You're clumsy. You lose track of time, etc., etc." It was just pretty brutal, right? <laughs> That's probably even like the nicer parts of those journal entries. <laughs> After I journaled all those down, I sat and I read every bit of them. And ouch. I mean, come on, ouch. I acknowledged just how hard I was being on myself. And I did tip number three and I thought about my niece and if she were in this situation, what would I say to her? I know for a fact I would never say any bit of that and I would just provide her comfort. I would let her know it's going to be okay and that she is still loved. I would let her know it was an accident and that accidents happen. I would never, ever make her question her whole worth due to this situation. So I thought of someone I loved about and I compared the way I was speaking to myself into how I would speak to them. After I did that, I did tip number four and I journaled down some positives to counteract all those negatives. And some of those statements looked like, you are forgetful. I mean, guys, I'm not going to pretend I'm not. I am. (laughs) I have ADHD. I have a lot of ideas. I'm a fast moving person and I know I'm forgetful. But I also acknowledge that I've come a long way. Look how much you've slowed down and started noticing your surroundings. I mean, I really have put effort into managing my very, very hyperactive brain. I journaled, you aren't perfect and accidents happen. Animals can be unpredictable, but you're a really great cat mom. You've never lost your pet before. This was truly a terrible accident that was not your fault. I journaled, you don't cause hurt. (laughs) Because that one I think was like, I think that one might have been the toughest of all the statements I was saying to me was just that like Pete, like I was a burden. I just cause disruption in people's life and that's not the case. So I wrote, you don't cause hurt. You cause a lot of joy and happy memories and you make houses feel like homes. Your partner and your animals are very lucky and grateful to have you. You love them with every part of your soul and you would do anything for them. One mistake doesn't discredit all of that love. And so by doing this, I gave myself some understanding that Lord knows I was not giving myself before. Then I moved on to tip number five and I brought some logic and solution into my very, very heavy emotions. I made a list of what I could do to remedy the situation. Beating myself up was not on that list. (laughs) So I put down print flyers, call the APL, go searching for him every night reach out in the local Facebook groups, ask for tips, etc. And then I started working towards forward thinking and I made a list of what I could do going forward once he finally came home, praying to goodness that he would. And that list included things like getting him and my other cat mimosa tracking collars. It included looking into screen doors that snap shut right away so he can't sneak out or dart. 
It included being more mindful of my surroundings and not so chaotic. Trying to slow down and not always being on the go and running around very crazily like I often do. I brought logical solutions into my situation and I focused on forward thinking instead of focusing on everything I've ever done wrong and everything I wish I could change about myself. So in your case, whatever it may be, whether it's family related, work, everyday life, just try and adopt a more compassionate approach. Really, really try and put focus on this because we spend every second of our day with ourselves. Truly, our minds are the only thing on this earth that takes up every bit of our thoughts and our time. Like we are with ourselves all the time. (laughs) And if our mind isn't a safe, kind, and compassionate place to be, it can seriously, seriously be detrimental to your mental health. And honestly, speaking from an artist perspective or a creative perspective, it could be so harmful to your creativity and your passions. It really can. You're going to mess up because you're human. I'm going to mess up because I'm human. But try and learn from your mess ups, try and grow through them, and most importantly, try and still love yourself through them. Seriously, please try and love yourself through them. Also, by the way, I should probably mention that Maxwell did come home. I shrieked with joy, I cried happy tears. So that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please share it with a friend or tag me on social media. I love to hear from you guys. You can always send me a DM with any bit of thoughts, questions, or feelings. You can find me on Instagram at Aristasia, A-R-A-S-T-A-S-I-A. My website is Aristasia.com. And of course, you can always find a recap of this episode inside of the show notes or on my blog. Just go ahead and visit the website. And please just remember that I am absolutely your artsy friend that is rooting for you. Stay shining and stay creating, my friend. You've got this.